Python virtual environment is a self-contained directory tree that holds its own Python interpreter, standard library, and site packages. By isolating everything in that folder, you can install whatever packages you need for one project without affecting your system Python or any other projects. Let me try to explain this visually. In your local operating system, you can have one or more versions of Python installed. These are global installations. They're sometimes referred to as base interpreters or just system installed Python versions. Let's say you have two versions of Python installed in your operating system, version 3.11 and 3.12. You're also working on three projects in your local machine, project A, project B, and project C. Project A needs to use Python version 3.11 and Pandas version 2.2. Project B needs to use Python version 3.11 and Pandas version 1.5. Project C needs to use Python version 3.12 and Pandas version 2.2. Using the correct version of Python is important because language features, library compatibility, security patches, and performance differs between the releases. Matching your project's specified Python version ensures it runs correctly, safely, and efficiently. It may also seem trivial, but using Pandas version 1.5 compared to 2.2 can cause your project to fail, because these versions can vary significantly. We can't solve the problem by installing both versions of Pandas in our global Python 3.11 installation, because installing one will overwrite the other. To address these project-specific requirements, we can set up a virtual environment for each project and install the packages directly within these environments your virtual environments must reference a specific Python interpreter. We can create three virtual environments, venv A, venv B, and venv C, each contained within their project. venv A and venv B reference Python version 3.11, and venv C references Python version 3.12. Any packages we install in the virtual environments will be isolated. We can install pandas version 2.2 in venv A and venv C, and Pandas version 1.5 in venvb. Because each virtual environment has its own site packages, installing Pandas in one environment doesn't overwrite the Pandas installation in the other environment. When you activate a specific environment, Python and pip automatically point to that environment, so you always get the correct interpreter and libraries. All of these virtual environments are isolated and contained within the directory of the specific project they relate to. So whenever you start on project A, you activate venv A. Project B, you activate venv B. Project C, you activate venv C. That way, each code base runs exactly on the Python version and dependencies it was built for. No surprises, no conflicts. So let's make this illustration more concrete with a demo. I'm going to use Python's built-in venv module for my virtual environments. But there are other popular alternatives you can use, such as poetry. I'm also using Visual Studio Code as my IDE, and I'm in a folder called Virtual Environments Demo that contains three subfolders. One for Project A, one for Project B, and one for Project C. I'll create three virtual environments within each project. In my system, I have Python version 3.11 and 3.12 installed. So I have my terminal here, and I'm going to change the directory to Project A. So I will cd into project A. So let me create a virtual environment in project A. The commands vary between the terminals, but on a Mac, you would type Python and then reference the version. So I want to create it based on Python version 3.11 and then the following. So I'm referencing the Python version and then I'm invoking each interpreter with the hyphen m venv option. Then I provide the path to the virtual environment. So this is the relative path. Since I've already cd'd into the project A directory, this virtual environment will be created in this project A directory. It's also standard practice to use a dot in the name of your virtual environment. This makes it a hidden directory. On a Windows, the syntax is slightly different. So I'll flash it on the screen. So let's create it. So notice, in project A, we have this .venv underscore A folder. So this is the virtual environment directory. Inside it, 
we get an isolated Python executable with activation scripts. We get a copy of the standard library. We get a site packages folder for all installed libraries. And we get a small config file, this pyvenv.cfg, recording the base interpreter. So as you can see, when I open this file, the base interpreter is Python version 3.11. So let's activate the virtual environment. So the syntax here is specific to using the terminal on Mac. You type source, followed by the name or the relative path of the virtual environment, slash bin, slash activate. The syntax on a Windows would be different and I'll flash it on the screen. So let's run this. So the virtual environment is now active. We can see that on the left here, inside of parentheses, we have the name of the active virtual environment. Let's check which version of Python is active in this environment. So I can type Python hyphen hyphen version. As you can see, Python version 3.11 is the active environment. Let's list all of the packages installed in this environment. So I can do pip list. A newly created virtual environment comes with pip and setup tools. That's why those are the only packages that are installed. Let's install pandas version 2.2. So I can type pip install pandas and specify the exact version I want, 2.2. Great, so that's installed. Let me clear the terminal. And now let's do another pip list. So we do have pandas version 2.2 installed, but we also have some additional packages. These are also installed because of the dependencies for Pandas version 2.2. To deactivate a virtual environment, you just type deactivate. And now notice that this will go. So we've deactivated the virtual environment. So let me clear the terminal. And now let's change the working directory to project B. So this project B folder. So I will go up a level by doing cd dot dot. And then I will cd into project B. And let's clear the screen. Let's create a virtual environment for this project. Again, I'll use Python version 3.11, but this time I'll call the virtual environment venv underscore B. So I will do Python version 3.11, hyphen M venv, and then the name of the virtual environment. As you can see, we've got a virtual environment set up within this project B folder. So let's activate this environment. Let's install pandas version 1.5 in this environment. Great, so let's clear the terminal. Let's verify the installation. So I could do pip list. As you can see, we have pandas version 1.5. So let's deactivate this environment, clear the terminal, and now let's navigate to the project C folder. So I will go up a directory level, and then I will do cd into project underscore C. So let's clear the terminal. This time I'm going to create a virtual environment for project C, referencing Python version 3.12. So I can do Python, 3.12, hyphen M, Venv, and then the relative path of the virtual environment. So I want to create it in the project C folder and it's called dot Venv underscore C. And here's the virtual environment. So let's activate it. So the environment is now active. Let's install pandas version 2.2. Okay, so let's clear the screen and let's verify the installation. As you can see, we have pandas version 2.2. And if I check the Python version, this time we have Python version 3.12. So to summarize what I've done so far, I have three virtual environments, venv a, venv b, and venv c. Each one contains their own isolated Python versions and packages. 
Virtual environments should not be included in version control because they're meant to be ephemeral and easily recreated. Virtual environments are also platform specific, so a Mac OS virtual environment won't work on a Windows or Linux. Not to mention, they can also be hundreds of megabytes in size and they can massively slow down your repository. Instead, if other developers want to recreate that environment in their own local machine, they can do so via a requirements.txt file, a pip file.lock, or a poetry.lock file. So there's no need to store the whole virtual environment in version control. So let me demonstrate how a developer would recreate this virtual environment using a requirements.txt file. A requirements.txt file is a simple line-by-line -line list of the Python packages and optionally their versions that your project depends on. It serves two main purposes. Reproducibility, so anyone can recreate your exact environment by running an install command referencing this requirements.txt file. It also serves the purpose of documentation. It makes it clear which libraries and versions your code needs. So let me create a requirements text file for this project, project C. So this is going to list all of the currently installed packages and their versions in this virtual environment, venv underscore C. So this is the currently active virtual environment. Therefore, I can type pip, freeze, use this greater than symbol, and then the name of the file I would like to output. So I'll call it requirements underscore C dot txt. So this command runs pip freeze to list all installed packages in the active environment. And this greater than symbol and then the path to this file redirects that list into this text file. If I run this command multiple times, it just overwrites this same file. So let me run this. And now in project C, we have this requirements txt file. So as you can see, it's listing all of the installed packages and their versions. So we have pandas version 2.2 installed here. So let me delete this virtual environment and show you how to recreate it from scratch simply using this requirements underscore c.txt file. So I will just right click on this environment and delete it. So now if I open up another terminal and close this one, we're no longer in that virtual environment. It doesn't exist, so I can't even activate it. So if I cd into project c and I try to do source, venv underscore c bin activate, it doesn't exist. So what I'll do is I'll create a new virtual environment. Again, I will reference Python version 3.12. And this time I'll just call it venv underscore c2. And here's the virtual environment. So let's activate that virtual environment. So source venv c2 slash bin slash activate. And now let's do a pip list. So it currently only has pip installed. So now to recreate the previous environment, we'll simply install all packages in this requirements text file. So the way to do that is by typing pip install r requirements underscore c dot txt. So this is the path to that file. So this r flag with the reference to this requirements file tells pip to read the list of packages from this file named requirements underscore c.txt. So they all get installed. So let's run this. So let's clear the terminal. And now if I do pip list, notice we have all of the packages installed. So we've recreated a new virtual environment with the same packages and versions as the previous environment that we deleted. So to summarize, virtual environments are a way to isolate your project's dependencies without affecting your system Python or any other projects. Thanks for watching. If this tutorial on Python virtual environments was helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more. If you have any questions or suggestions, then feel free to drop a comment below. See you next time.